Hi, this is Mary Kramer, and I wanted to update you on the prescription drug monitoring program. Missouri was the last holdout state, and in 2021, legislation was passed so that we now are also included with all of the other states and territories in the United States for a very large data bank of health information. Uh, the company that housed that information was called APRIS, and the name has now been changed to Bamboo Health. And so there's a lot of things that happened and it keeps evolving into a loss of medical freedom, uh, a loss of medical rights. This is not a program that you can opt out of or it's even being disclosed that you're in this program or that how your data is even being used and stored and what information they have on you. So I wanna show you a little bit of, of things right now that Bamboo Health is doing and to kind of give you an idea. But there was some information about what was happening in 2021 that caused this big push that they wanted and needed in Missouri in this PDMP program. And it's not what most people knew about. Okay, this is the Bamboo Health website. Up at the top, it says, Welcome to Bamboo Health, formerly APRIS Health and Patient Ping. And notice here under the tab, Who We Help, State Governments, Hospitals and Health Systems, Health Plans, Physicians. It doesn't say anything on here about helping patients. And that's the truth. They're, they don't help patients. Um, here, under Solutions, there's lots of different words that seem to be uh, just put there. But if you actually click on there, there's actually links that will explain about how this all uh, connects to data. NARCS care is actually almost like a credit rating and actually can prevent patients from getting access to prescriptions. And they don't even know that they're being scored and, and this is happening. So it's, it's rather, um, it's just an awful system. PINGS is notifications. And now look, we've got a prescription drug monitoring program that's reaching over into the behavioral health care. Um, lots of different things here that you need to look at. Over on news and resources, if you go here to the news and press releases, there's lots of information. And if you notice the dates, they're coming out about every week. There's lots of things to open up and read. One thing to notice here is Commonwealth um, is going to do an interview with Rob Cohen, who is the CEO of Bamboo Health, and I'll play that for you. And he kind of talks about the direction of how health care, which I don't really call it care anymore, it's health control is going into the future. So I'm going to show you some other videos and uh, you can check this out. The next few clips are from a Bamboo Health webinar regarding rules and regulations for CMS, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And since most hospitals take Medicare and Medicaid, they do not want to lose their funding. So they're going to jump through whatever bureaucratic hoops are in front of them so that they can keep getting the funding that they need. And this is another thing important is that they're really not telling people about what's going on. Okay, so they're making decisions and they're not letting the public know what government is doing. And once again, it's a bureaucratic decision. And this is one thing that they needed was Missouri to be in, involved in the PDMP because they're pulling the data from the company that has the PDMP data. So they needed Missouri in that system, but they didn't tell people that. So watch this. On the e-notifications rule. So in um, May, or excuse me, in March of 2020, two major healthcare IT rules were finalized, the ONC Cures Act final rule and the CMS interoperability and patient access final rule. 
And while both of these rules contained many final provisions of note, we of course today are going to be focusing on the new hospital condition of participation, which was contained within the CMS interoperability and patient access rule. So this COP joins a number of existing conditions of participation for hospitals participating in Medicare and was added with the overarching goal of improving information sharing. Through this COP, CMS has recognized that patients receive care in many siloed settings and that hospital related care transitions are really critical moments in which communication and coordination across settings is of paramount importance. And while recognizing that there are existing systems in place for information sharing today, through things like real time notifications, such as admit discharge transfer notifications, CMS really wants through this new COP to eliminate any barriers for sharing information with the ultimate hope and understanding being to improve access to care coordination information, which as I'm sure we all can appreciate really is essential to driving improved patient outcomes and on the CMS side, really looking into cost savings in their value based programs. Now for Next a little slide. bit more about the condition of participation itself. So this new COP or condition of participation went into effect for hospitals on May 7th, 2021. So this past May, and it requires hospitals to make as CMS calls it a reasonable effort to send real time notifications at the point of inpatient and observation events, as well as at the point of ED events. So looking at observations, admissions, discharges and transfers. And these notifications are required to go to the patient's established primary care physician, any established primary care entities, as well as patient identified practitioners or entities. And then finally, to any applicable post acute providers, both patient identified or currently involved in that patient's care. And then these messages are all required to contain at minimum the patient's name, the treating practitioner's name and the sending institution's name. Although, of course, in many instances, they end up containing more information than that to promote more care coordination. Next slide. And with the rule now having um, come into effect and the condition of participation now being something that hospitals must actually comply with, CMS shortly after the rule went into effect, so on May 7th of this year, also published its interpretive guidance for this e-notification COP. And this really is meant to give a little bit of additional clarity on some questions that might have come up in the uh, um, wording of the rule itself, as well as just provide any additional suggestions for how providers and hospitals may consider this rule. And so within the interpretive guidance, CMS actually included um, guidance for six separate provisions within the condition of participation. And three of the, these were really of particular note, and we're going to dive into those a little bit more. So the three main takeaways from the um, interpretive guidance are takeaways around consent language, reasonable effort and ACO attribution lists. And we will now dive into those a bit more here. This last clip is of Commonwealth interviewing Rob Cohen, who is the CEO of Bamboo Health. And they're talking about data and healthcare and where they see things in the year 2030. And notice that they are not talking about the prescription drug monitoring program at all. They are talking about health care, actually health control. This is the loss of your medical freedom and your medical rights. You should be upset. This is not the direction that the United States needs to be taking. It's Commonwealth TV 2022 right here from our Orlando studios and we're introducing you to some of our Commonwealth Health Alliance members and it's time now to hear from Bamboo Health and their president and general manager Rob Cohen and Rob, Commonwealth has been using fire since its inception, but soon Commonwealth will be enabling discrete data exchange via fire across the network. What does this mean for patients and providers? Yeah, there's actually a massive difference. Uh, you know, 
while Commonwealth has been using fire, what they've been doing mostly is exchanging what are called CCDAs, which are continuity of care documents. The exchange of those is huge progress over what used to happen, which was the exchange of nothing. So we certainly recognize that. But CCDAs can actually be pretty difficult to deal with. They can be difficult to parse, difficult to interpret, and they can lead to data quality issues as well as just overhead issues in terms of the technology and processing required to, to process them in the way you need to. What, what exchanging discrete fire resources means is that you can actually call the specific piece of data that you want. You can say, I want to see diagnoses. You can say, I want to see lab results. You can say, I, I want to see these specific things and you get it back in a very digestible, very clean format. And as we move toward a world where rather than just, uh, you know, delivering a whole sea of data to a provider, you want to deliver very, just the, just the right things at the right time, then the ability to call those things and process just those things is really important for a variety of reasons. So it's, a, it's huge progress. Rob, complete this phrase for me. Because of interoperability, by 2030, this could occur. Tremendous uh, progress in care coordination uh, and in value-based care. Uh, as we think about what's required for care coordination, it starts with data. Right, everything from analytics uh, all the way up to then intervening with high risk patients to allowing care teams to understand what other care teams are doing and allowing providers to see a full picture of the patient. It obviously all starts with data sharing and interoperability. Uh, I think what's important is that beyond that, then you can talk about intelligent interoperability. And when I talk about that, what I mean by that is it, what I said before is not just delivering a whole sea of data to the provider, but delivering very tailored and very actionable insights. Uh, you know, providers are busy when they're, certainly when they're in front of a patient, there's a lot going on. Uh, the office visits are oftentimes pretty short uh, and providers often have what they call alert fatigue. They're getting way too many alerts about way too many things. And so you just wanna make sure that what you're delivering is really relevant, really important and really actionable. Like, okay, here's a discrete insight. Now I understand what I'm supposed to do with that insight. And, um, and interoperability and intelligent interoperability allows us to take those discrete fire resources or other formats uh, uh, and process them and tailor them to that provider and that patient and that time uh, such that it really improves um, both care coordination and ultimately value-based care outcomes, which is what we all want because the greater the outcomes in value-based care and the, the greater the ability to perform in value-based care we'll see it grow and we'll see that trend continue transformation of the health system world and from reactive care to proactive care. Rob, it's, it's no secret that care is uncoordinated in, in the industry. So in your opinion, what needs to happen to increase collaboration across the continuum of care? Yeah, it's really the, the processing of data, as I mentioned, to enable what I said, intelligent interoperability. And so uh, to expand upon that, if you think about what that means and what the right patient, the right provider at the right time means is, who is the patient that's in front of the provider right now for about whom I can deliver an insight into the point of care? It needs to go into the workflow of the provider, into the EHR, such that they're not taken out of their workflow because that just won't work for them. And then it needs to consider beyond that, who this provider is. So for example, if this is a primary care uh, physician and has a patient in front of them, they may want to get an insight about a gap in care. This patient needs an immunization that they're behind on. This patient needs a, a particular diagnostic uh, that they're behind on. And those are things that primary care might want to deal with, might want to know about. On the other hand, if the patient is seeing a pain specialist, then that pain specialist may want a prescription history and some insights about prescriptions. Uh, they may want to understand past surgeries. They may want to understand behavioral health issues because those are important. So it's about the right patient, the right provider, the right time in real time uh, and right in the workflow, as I mentioned. And so those are all the keys to, to really enabling care collaboration, care coordination, and which is the key to, to value-based care. He's Rob Cohen of Bamboo Health, one of our proud members of our Commonwealth Health Alliance. And for more on their organization, as well as how your organization can become a part of Commonwealth, we invite you to log on to CommonwealthAlliance.org.
This is all about the data. This is about the government and data collected on us being used to treat or maybe treat us in the future. Do you want the government to be your doctor? The sanctity of the doctor-patient relationship is being destroyed. So we need to contact our elected officials and let them know that the bureaucratic takeover of the healthcare system is not something that will benefit anyone. They're breaking the system on purpose.